Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from ScreencastWorld.com. In this series of tutorials I'll show you how to create a MySQL database and database user to support the installation of Magento Commerce. You can find the other screencasts in this series either on the Screencast World YouTube channel or in the show notes which you'll find on ScreencastWorld.com. So in this screencast I'll show you how to use the phpMyAdmin to create a Magento database and database user now, PHP MyAdmin is a free software tool written in PHP intended to handle the administration of MySQL using a browser user interface. PHP MyAdmin allows us to do a wide range of operations on our MySQL database, the most frequent of which are managing databases, tables, indexes, fields and user permissions etc. PHP MyAdmin also allows us to directly execute SQL statements against our databases. Now the process for using phpMyAdmin for creating databases and database users is going to be the same whether you're doing this via web hosting cPanel interface or your phpMyAdmin is installed locally on a development server or on your live web server. Now for this particular screencast I'll be using a local development server but I'll quickly show you where you can find phpMyAdmin within your cPanel. So here you can see I've logged into my control panel and if we scroll down to the databases section we'll find the phpMyAdmin link. Now as I want to use my local development server with a local installation of phpMyAdmin, I'm going to flip over to this tab where I've already logged into phpMyAdmin. Now when you log into phpMyAdmin, you'll first be presented with a home page. Now here we'll find a create new databases section. You can also create databases using the databases tab at the top. Here we have a freeform text box in which we enter our desired database name. As I discussed in the introductory screencast, we want to avoid any easy to guess database names as it improves the security of our databases and therefore Magento websites. So we're going to employ the technique known as security through obfuscation. In other words, we want to either prefix or postfix our database name with random letters and numbers so that it makes it harder for anybody to guess. Now we don't want to end up with an ultra long database name, so using five or six random characters is typically sufficient. So with this in mind, I'm going to create a new database now I'll use the prefix and postfix obfuscation method. So let's call the database something like zi36 underscore magento underscore 26pq. Now we can see that I've used magento in the middle here, so it still means something to me when I log in. To the right of this text field is a drop down selection where we can select the supported or default character set for our database. A character set is a set of symbols and encodings. Essentially, this is your local language alphabet, including all the alpha characters, numbers and special characters. Now a collation is a set of rules comparing those characters in the character set. Now the default option is collation, which means we need to choose one. Now I typically choose one of the UTF-8 collations, as it gives the widest support for most languages. Now I find that right down at the bottom. Now I typically go for the UTF-8 Unicode CI. Now when we're done, we can just hit the create button. We get the confirmation message that our database has been created successfully. phpMyAdmin also gives us the SQL that was run to create the database. If for any reason your database wasn't created successfully, you'll need to investigate and correct before you proceed. Note that our database that we've just created has been automatically selected. This means that any operations we do from here on in are done against this database until such times that we select a different database to work on. So now that our database has been created, we want to go ahead and create a user and password that has access to this and only this database. So we navigate over to the Privileges tab where we see a list of current users. As you can see here, I only have the root user available, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the Add New User link and this takes us over to the Add New User page. Now when choosing a username, remember our security through obfuscation rule. So I'm going to create a username called magdbuser1020. Next we have to specify what host or host this user will be allowed to log in from. If we do a drop down we can see that we have three options. We have local host, which is the host that MySQL is running on. We also have the ability to specify other hosts using either the host table or the text field. In most instances, your web server and MySQL servers will be running on the same host, so we'll want to choose local. If your web server and database server are two different physical systems, you'll need to choose one of these two 
and specify the IP address of your web servers. But for now, I'm just going to choose local. Now to generate a password for this user, we can use the integrated password generator by hitting the generate button. And this will generate some random passwords for us and automatically populate the password and retype field. Now under the database for user area, we have four options. By default, this user will be granted all privileges on our currently selected database. For a test or development environment for which you have full control over, this is sufficient. For a production web server, you'll find that the privileges this user will be assigned are more than what we need. If you watch the introduction screencast, you'll have heard me say that we want to assign the least amount of privileges required to make the application work. So for this reason, I'm going to select None. Now this will mean that this user isn't associated with any databases, but in a moment I'll show you how to associate this user and specify the exact privileges that this user will have on that database. If we scroll down further, we have the ability to give this particular user global privileges. Now this is something that you don't want to do. Global privileges would allow this user access to other databases running on this server. Again, a golden rule is to allow a user access to only one database, the exception being the root user. This again is for security reasons. If, for any reason, the password for this user is exposed, we want to limit the risk to only one database. If this user had access to multiple databases, those databases would also be compromised. Now we need to scroll down to the bottom and click the Go button. Once we've done that, you should see the confirmation message at the top to confirm that the user was created and added successfully. We now have the opportunity to select the privileges we want for this user. Now had we selected the All Privileges option in the previous screen, we would have given our user all of these privileges including administration rights. But what we actually want is only about half of them. So the ones we want are Select, Insert, Update, Delete. We also want to Create, Alter, Index, Drop and Create Temporary Tables. Once we've done that, we can hit the Go button in the bottom right hand corner. Now that's essentially all we need to do at this point. If you want to make any changes to the user, select the Privileges tab at the top and then we can see our user here, we can click on the Actions, which is Edit Privileges. And once in the screen, we can change any of the global privileges, database specific privileges, we can change the password for this user, and any of the login credentials. Now remember to hit the Go button to commit any changes you make. Similarly, if you want to change anything related to the database, we can scroll up to the top, hit Databases, select our database from the list, now we can manipulate the database using any of the operations supported through these tabs at the top. So this brings us to the end of this screencast. If you've enjoyed this video tutorial, please take a moment to comment and rate on it. Finally, it just leaves me to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again in one of my other video tutorials from screencastworld.com.